Hello economic students and this is our last video on market failure and we're looking at this uh, concept of asymmetric information. Now let's use the language here because I doubt any of you have used this word asymmetric before. But when we look at the second part and we ignore the A, it says symmetric. Now symmetric is maybe a word that you have or symmetrical cool is maybe a word that you have used before, right? You may have thought about a symmetrical painting or a symmetrical drawing. It's when uh, something is balanced, right? When something's even. Now, once we put the A in front of the symmetrical or in front of the symmetric, it's asymmetric, which means the opposite. It's when there's an imbalance, when it's not even, right? And in this case, it's asymmetric information. All right, so what does that mean? It basically means that one party in a transaction has more information about the costs and benefits of that transaction than the other. Now, most of the time, most of the time, it's the supplier that has more information, which leads the consumer to make bad decisions or what we might call suboptimal decisions about what to purchase. So in simple terms, consumers are gonna buy stuff that they probably or otherwise wouldn't have provided they had all the information. So asymmetric information can lead to a market over allocating resources to things that society perhaps doesn't need or want and under allocating resources to other things, therefore, that maybe we did want, but we didn't know we wanted because we didn't have all the information. So let me show you what this looks like uh, with a little example. So uh, this is my first car, this, this is nothing like my first Honda Pro, but this is the model of my first car. And I want you to imagine that you've bought your first car. And what happens is, as it happened to me, you drive it out and you're feeling amazing about driving your first car and it, it breaks down on you, right? The smoke starts rising out of the bonnet. So you take it to the mechanic and uh, the mechanic says something like this, right? Uh, the needle bearings in your alternator have rusted out. Yeah, you need a new alternator and it's gonna cost $800. So what do you do? What are you gonna do in that situation? Of course, I know you're well-versed in microeconomics, but I don't know many of you who are mechanics. So we have an asymmetric information problem here. There's an imbalance between you and the mechanic, all right, the supplier. So uh, you don't really need to know, you don't really know whether you need a new alternator or, or not, right? So it may lead you to get one when you don't need it. And therefore that $800 could have been allocated to something else that you really did need, okay? So in this, in this example, the consumer doesn't have enough information or knowledge to make an efficient decision. So the market fails, okay? We could extend this to servicing your car as well, right? You don't really know whether you need the service or not. In fact, buying anything, uh, you know, something in a market that's like uh, free from anything, like gluten-free or sugar-free or, you know, uh, free-range eggs, all those things, whenever they put free in front of a product, I feel like that's a bit of a scam. Uh, in lots of those instances, and again, remember, we're imagining a free market, free and competitive market where there's no government intervention, there is no consumer laws. Uh, so in this case, the average person wouldn't know whether they need to get their car fixed or whether they should buy free range eggs or whether they need to buy sugar free. And therefore we over allocate towards car parts and towards all these things, right? So not efficient. All right, so. Uh, I just talked about that. So second thinking activity. Imagine you have just bought your first car and you're driving it out of the lot. Uh, you're driving it out of the lot, but you don't have enough money to insure the car yet. And you're driving around with ins without insurance. I want you to think about how you behave. Driving home without insurance. Then a couple of days later, uh, you get it, you get the money, you pay the insurance and you've got insurance now, right? You're happy. You put the P plates up and you drive around. How do you behave now? What changes? And what I'm getting at here is this problem of a moral hazard. And this is sort of an extension. And it's almost like when the supplier, sorry, when the consumer, at least in this example, has more information than the supplier. So the opposite of what we just spoke of. These are moral hazards. These are when one party is protected from the risks uh, by the other party. So what does that mean? Once you insure your car, you're gonna drive very differently to when you are uninsured, right? Because you're protected, in fact, the insurer is taking your risk. 
And it's an asymmetric information problem because, well, are you really going to tell them everything about yourself and how you're going to drive? Maybe not. There's another example here about the financial crisis in 2008. That was your um, probably the most famous moral hazard. Basically, the banks, investment banks made big bets. Uh, they were able to make big bets knowing they were too big to fail, knowing that the government would bail them out. And you may have heard economists say things like they would they socialized the cost. So society bore the, bore the cost if the bets went wrong and they privatized the benefits. So if the bet, bet, uh, bet went well, then you know the big investment banks like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, well, they made lots of money. If it went bad, society paid. This is a very bad situation, obviously, and it's a market failure. All right, and finally getting a long-term contract at work uh, can lead you can lead you to doing things that perhaps are less efficient, like sleeping under your desk. Right, you're protected if you're not going to get fired because you've got a long-term contract. You're less motivated to work. Okay, so some examples of moral hazards there, and we looked at some examples of um, some other examples of asymmetric information. All right, bye for now.